Hello everybody! Today we're going to do a quick little project that baffles a lot of people. Um, this one is going to show you how to join decorative twist cord or rope cord or there's different names for it. But the kind of cord we're going to talk about today looks like this. It's a decorative cord with a lip and it has a twist pattern to it. It'll come in different sizes. As you can see, here's a small one and here's a larger one. And I'm going to show you how to join these together so that if you put this around your pillow, you're going to have a seamless, continuous decorative trim. You will not be able to tell where it stops and starts. So that's what we're going to do today. Be right back. Here we have our two cords, um, our twist cords. The first thing I want to point out is that these cords, when they're manufactured, always have a front and a back. Um, you will see that one side, the tape almost comes up, it looks like almost towards the back of the cord. And on the other side you'll see that indeed this cord is stitched on top of the twist cord on the back. So this is the back of the cord where some of the cord is covered by the tape and this is the front of the cord where you have more visible cord showing before the tape starts. So if your pillow has a definite front and back, let's say the front of your pillow is a pattern and the back of your pillow is just a plain fabric, you're going to want to go ahead and use the front of your cord face down on the front of your pillow because overall this side is going to always look a little bit better than this side after your pillow is made. And the same is true for this trim. This is going to be the front of this cord. And it's a little bit harder to see on the tiny one, but this cord is stitched up on top of the back of this twist cord. That's the back. And that's the front. All right, the first thing we're going to do is start applying our cord and remember we have a front and a back you want the right sides together this is my front so make sure you're starting on the end of the cord where you can put your right sides together and you're going to leave yourself a nice generous tail maybe about four inches or so and as you can see I've searched my edges here I don't always do that. The reason I did that on this fabric is that it's got a very, very, it's actually burlap. It's got a very loose weave and it'll fray like crazy. Um, so I went ahead and surged it just to keep it neater and a little bit stronger. So you'll just start by on the bottom of your pillow. And I'm going to use white thread here so it's easier for you to see. I'm just going to start with a nice long stitch and I'm just going to baste my cord on the first time around. And if you remember um, the other videos I showed about how I keep my pillows from having pointy corners, we're going to go ahead and taper our, our trim in. So I'm going to quickly just go around my pillow till I get to the other side. Okay, the next thing you're going to want to do is give yourself plenty of room to work here. This is one particular time where you don't want to short yourself working space. So I've left a nice long tail here and my join is going to be right about here. So I'm going to leave a nice long tail and I'm going to tape it so that it doesn't come unraveled when it's in, when the rest of it's being stored. 
Okay, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to sew till about an inch from where you stopped with your last stitching. Okay, so I've secured it down to about an inch or so, and now I'm just going to back tack and get the sewing machine foot out of my way so that I can work. All right, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to take this tape off of the cord. And you're just going to stop right where you stopped your stitching. That's about where you're going to stop pulling it off. And just trim that. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, as far as we want to go. And we're going to make a little bit of an overlap here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay these pieces of tape on top of each other just to help keep everything lined up and in place. All right, I'm going to back up again. Um, so I can work. And as you see, I have my zipper foot on here so I can get a little bit close to the edge of the cord. We're, we're not snugging it up right now. We're just basting it on. Okay, the next thing you're going to see is that these twist cords are made up of three strands. Before you go any further, you can see what's starting to happen already. These strands are starting to completely unwind and come apart. We want to keep the twist that is within each cord intact. So the next thing that I do is I take a little piece of tape I make sure my cord is twisted the way it was before I cut it and I'm going to just put a piece of tape around it to keep it from unraveling. I'm going to do that on all three ends. This is just where it was all basted together, that little thread there. See, I'm just keeping my, keeping my twist pattern intact. And I'm taping it on there. And we're going to do the same thing with this end. And as you can see, look how it just totally starts coming apart. That's why it's good to not leave yourself a little tiny amount of trim to join because you just really need some room to work on this without making it harder on yourself than it needs to be. So we're going to tape all of our cord ends together. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the pattern here. See I have these three cords that lay in a pattern. This one now comes out underneath there. Do you see that? This one is coming 
up and over the top. This one, as you can see, if I start unraveling it, comes out from the bottom. So what we want to do is we start, we want to start with the pattern that comes out from the bottom first. This one comes out from the bottom. And what we're going to do is we're just going to unwrap this pattern until we get to that little one inch space, you can probably see it under here, right there, that we're using for the area we're going to join. So I'm going to just unwrap it, it needs one more. And what you want to do is just keep the, keep the angle consistent with how it came off. It's not coming off at 90 degrees like that. It's coming off at about 45 degrees. And the other thing you want to do is make sure that you're giving this cord plenty. You're not going to want to pull it tight. You want to keep, keep that pattern as consistent as you can. Now, if you're having trouble with this the first time, you can even lay a piece of tape. Get another piece. If it'll help you while you're learning, you can lay these down here and you can literally just kind of tape them. And don't tape it too close. You really don't want to sew through anything sticky like that and get anything sticky on your needle or down in your sewing machine. But then all you're going to do is lay this piece on top. And if you need to unwrap it one time, I don't know if you can see this, That's basically what you're trying to do here. Now, I kind of feel like it's a little crowded. I'm going to unwrap it one time. Pull that one down there. Oh, that's better. See how that just fell right into place? That's perfect. And now you're going to, again, continue the direction that these are already wanting to lay in. And again, if while you're learning you want to use tape, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a temporary way to hold it. And then all you need to do now another thing, it, this is kind of thick. So sometimes, and, and you're actually, your tape is going in this direction, but your sewing machine is going in this direction. Sometimes I found that if I start back here and baste forward, it kind of pushes this and changes the angle. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually start on top like this, and I'll actually go backwards. And you're just going to baste this down. Take your time, it's kind of thick. And flip it over. Check that out. That's fabulous. By the time your front and back is put together and this is all stitched down nice and tight, you're, you're never going to be able to see it. So that's the trick to making the join. So, at this point, you've sewn it on. If you want to take off your tape, you can. And I don't actually cut these threads until I've uh, sewn my front onto my back. Um, 
just to make sure if I want to redo something I have plenty left to work with to, to redo it like if I found for instance let's say I found for instance that this particular piece of cord has been pulled too tight or too loosely and I want to just release that stitching and adjust that cord a little bit it's a lot, a lot easier to do before you've cut it short so next thing we're going to do is just sew our front to our back and see what we've got okay I am going to just sew my bottom edge together so we can see what this join looks like on my finished pillow I am going to go ahead and use my welt foot this is a foot that is designed to ride over cord. Um, now most household sewing machines aren't going to have a foot like this. You're going to have to use a zipper foot. On really th you know, thick cords like this, you can do it with a zipper foot. Um, it's easier and you get a little bit of a better finish with a large foot like this, a, a welt foot or a cording foot. Um, I will say that if your household machine is making it really difficult for you to get through these thick layers or get as close as you want with your zipper foot, that's when you may want to go ahead and use a smaller diameter cord trim. Um, so when I get done with this pillow, I'm just going to show you how we do this with a small trim and how much easier it is to sew over. But for right now, I'm just going to sew this seam closed. going to do the whole pillow. I just want to show you what we've got here. Okay, y'all, check that out. I mean, I bet you can't even tell where that join is. That's beautiful. Let's see where it was. Okay, it's over here. Let's take a closer look. I mean, come on. Check it out. You can do it. You can impress all your friends. And now you can get a perfectly joined twist cord on your pillow. And just like the other one, I'm going to adjust these cords, try and get the right amount of tension to keep my pattern consistent. And I'm going to sew backwards. Baste it down. And as you can see, that's a pretty good join right there. This one's super shiny, so something really reflective shows flaws a little bit, a little bit more than something that is matte, but that's a pretty good join right there. And you'll see that if you were to go ahead and, you know, do your pillows right sides together, this, this small cord is much, much easier to sew over and get close to than the real thick cord. I'm just doing this with my little zipper foot. So, as I said, if you're having trouble with the big cord getting through it, your machine getting through your machine, you can go ahead and use your zipper foot. It's much simpler.